Now, we're going to show you what the mark of the beast is. We're going to show you what the 666 is. What is it? What is it? What's it? What's it? Y'all better take notes. Let's start off. Let's go to 2 Peter 3 and 7. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Elder Netanyahu, today they're going to make their choice. Which one is, is this God, you, or men? That's right. 2 Peter 3 and 7. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What does perdition mean? Brothers, what does perdition mean? Perdition. Per destruction. Okay, Gabriel, can we look that up? Perdition. Perdition, a state of final spiritual ruin. Loss of the soul, damnation. I like that damnation. The future state of the wicked. Okay, I like that. Write that down. Perdition means, it does mean destruction. It means damnation and condemned. Write those words down. They're going to play a key part in today's lesson. So let's read 2 Peter 3 and 7 again. 2 Peter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. So this country... And its allies are reserved, because that's what it's talking about, are reserved unto what, brothers? Fire. So don't play around here in this country. This is the land of our captivity. Don't play. It's reserved for fire. Go ahead. Against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And damnation of ungodly men. Hold that. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall that day is referring to the second coming of the lord that day because everybody was asking hey paul you talk about the lord returning when is he coming back so paul said what read it again let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come Except there come a falling away first. So Paul says the first thing that has to happen before the Lord returns, the Israelites must fall and go into captivity. All 12 tribes must fall and go into captivity. That's what he's talking about. That's what the precept for that is, Luke 21, where Christ said they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. Y'all with me? Everybody with me? Read on. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The second thing that got to be done, the man of sin must be revealed. The son of what, brothers? Perdition. Didn't we just read that word in Peter about the, the world that's now reserved unto fire? Right? Okay. So now, it says, and that man of sin. So that man right there, Christianity will teach you, run around. Check everybody's uh, hair. Like, what was that movie where they had the, the omen with Damien? I don't know how many of y'all saw that. He had three sixes. They was checking in his hair. Check. That's the man of perdition. The man of perdition, brothers, is not, this is not talking about an individual. It's talking about a race of man. I'm, let me help you out there. Give me Isaiah 14 and, is it 16? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, 16 or something like that. Give me that. About that man. Isaiah 14 and verse 16. All right, come on. They that see thee, shall, they that see thee, talking about Lucifer, the damn devil, go ahead, shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? Is this what? The man that made the earth to tremble? Is it one dude running around the earth making it tremble? How do you make the earth tremble, brothers? Bombs, read. That did shake kingdoms. Is it one man running around shaking kingdoms, brothers? It's talking about a race of man, read. That made the world as a wilderness. Is it one man running around making the world as a wilderness, brothers? Talking about a race of men. Your good, your friend and mine, your friendly neighborhood white man. That's who's doing this. So when we go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 again. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. So that man of sin, the son of perdition, is your friendly neighborhood white man. He has to be revealed as the wicked the Bible's speaking of. Everybody understand that? 
So now, he's the son of perdition. He's the son of damnation. Whoa, 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 that's heavy. Get me Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. Why is this dragon red, brothers? Genesis 25, 25. Genesis 25, 25, real quick for me. Just to show you that this red dragon is Esau. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 25. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So, Y'all see that? And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Get me Job 30 and verse 29. Because somebody will go, no, it's a dragon. This ain't talking about men. Because you always got those uh, white supremacist apologetics out there. Anything Israel bring out, they try to debunk. Like the black woman we just saw. No, it's Revelation said dragons. Dragons are not men. Job 30 and 29. Job chapter 30 and verse 29. I am a brother to dragons and a companion <laughs> to owls. I am a brother to dragons. Talk about wicked men. Wicked men. Now, let's go back. Let's go back. So now, the great red dragon having seven heads. Who can name the seven heads for me? If I, I want them in order. Brothers be jumping around. Start, don't start with Russia. Uh, Greece. Rome. Greece. Spain, Rome. Spain. France. France. Germany. Germany. Russia. Russia. Great Britain. Great Britain. Very good. So the seventh head is Britain. Write that down. And I'm saying that I'm specifying Britain for a reason. Mm -hmm. The seventh head, the first was, wait, do it again, brother. Do it again. Ephraim, one more again, one more again. Greece. Greece Rome. is, wait, wait, you're going too fast for them. Remember, these are blacks and Latinos. They don't write that fast. <laughs> the first head is Greece. Go ahead. Rome. The second head is Rome. Spain. The third head is Spain. France. The fourth head is France. Germany. The fifth head is Germany. Russia. The sixth head is Russia. Great Britain. And the seventh head is Great Britain. Everybody got that? All right, watch this. Revelation 17, this is where I wanted to get to. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. Now, listen good. Listen good. How did God teach us to read the Bible, brothers? What you got to understand about the book of Revelation? Hold me there. Give me Hosea 12 and 10. The book of Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and used similitudes. Used similitudes. Used similar. Meaning God compared one thing to another. Go ahead. By the ministry of the prophets. That's how the prophets wrote things down with similitudes. That's why when you read in the book of Revelation, it talked about the great red dragon. You got, what is it similar to? It's similar to men. Job 30, 29. I am a brother to dragons. What brother was red? Genesis 25, 25. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Have I lost anybody? Okay. So now, Revelation 17 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 17 and verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was. Now, this beast that he's talking about is this beast having seven heads and ten horns. Oh, I forgot that part. The ten horns, write that down as NATO, the European Union. I forgot that part. Read it again, Captain. The beast that thou sawest was. Was in your vision. The beast that you saw with the seven heads and ten horns, it was in your vision. Go ahead. And is not. It is not currently in existence. Go ahead. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. It shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, which is Europe. Go ahead. And go into perdition. And go into damnation. Destruction. Jump down to verse 11. Watch this. Verse 11. And the beast that was. The beast that was in your vision. And is not. And is not currently in existence. Even he is the eighth. He is the eighth head. 
and is of the seven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The seventh head was what, brothers? What nation came out of Britain? America. The good old U.S. of A. Read verse 11 one more again. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. He's the eighth head. And is of the seventh. He is of the seventh head. He came from Great Britain. And goeth into perdition. And goeth into destruction. Damn nation. So what is John talking about? America. Great Babylon. Babylon the Great. Watch this. We ain't finished. We ain't finished. So this place goeth into perdition, brothers. Remember we read 2 Peter 3 and 7. This world is reserved unto fire. For how did it go? But perdition. And the perdition of ungodly men. Remember we read in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. That man of sin be revealed the son of what? Perdition. The eighth head goes in to perdition, right? Which is America. It's all talking about the same thing. I'm using all these precepts to show you. Nothing has changed. The prophets are using similitudes. Everybody with me so far? Okay, we're just gonna get a little heavier now. Get me Romans 9. You know what? Romans 9 is so heavy. It's so heavy. When we were coming up in the truth, we could not read Romans 9. I'm gonna tell you why we couldn't read Romans 9. Because the elder, Arya, would not let us get past three words. He would always take the mic from us. He would be going down the block, and one of us would go, get Romans 9. He would stop. The finger go, he walked right back. We couldn't read. We had to stop. Just stand like this. And he would take the mic. And that was it. <laughs> we wait, we look. Is he, did he leave? He's out of view now? Get Romans 9, get Romans 9. Then you see a big hand come up. Wait! And he come from behind the corner. What the hell is this? That was one of his fav famous chapters. Romans 9 and verse uh, 17. Let's start there. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So now you may be reading this for the first time and think that uh, Paul is really talking about Pharaoh. Pharaoh was long dead by this time, correct? So let's jump up to verse 13. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau have I hated. Anybody got um, the baby name dictionary on them? Oh, we got it? Give me that. Give me that. Y'all got to get this book. So classical biblical baby names by Judith Tropa. So now I want to look up the name Esau. And I want the last paragraph for Esau. You listen to me? I want the last paragraph. Listen good. I want y'all to listen good. What we're about to read, Christians don't know. Some of you don't know. The scholars that put this thing together, they stayed within the cultural context <laughs> in order to come up with the right information. Read that. All right. Esau, of interest, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, keeping it in cultural context, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. You ought to hear what he said. You whisper. You got to say that louder. Esau is considered a significant character in world history and the forefather of the Roman Empire. All them Romans were Esau. All of them Edomites. Now, Christians don't know that. You know that. So now, now, wait a minute. Go back to Romans 9 now. Romans 9, verse 13. Romans 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So when we jump down to verse 17 now, 17, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Pharaoh was raised up and destroyed already. So what Paul is saying to us, and he's using a what's the word? A similar to. People will always ask, well, if Rome was so wicked, why didn't Paul just stand up and say Rome is the devil? Why couldn't he do that? The laws of Rome were strict. You could not speak against the state. What was the crime they put for Christ on the cross? Anybody know? Treason. You could not speak against Rome. Everybody understand that? That's the difference between then and now. We can run our mouth now. 
Most High put these little laws out here in this country. Freedom of speech. Oh, yeah? It's on now. <laughs> Read that again, Isaac. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now jump down to 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So Paul is using a similar tool comparing Esau to who, brothers? To Pharaoh. At that time, Esau was called who? Only one person knew Rome. Y'all didn't know who Esau was in, the, in this time in the book of Romans? Okay. All right. Read that again. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee. So God, the similitude is Egypt. He wants you to think about ancient Egypt. It, be, it was a world superpower before Moses came on the scene and God used Moses and destroyed Egypt. Everybody understand that? Now he's comparing Egypt to Esau. During the time of Rome, they was not raised up to the pinnacle they are raised up now. With all the technology that is out today, they're raised up to the point that only God can bring them down. He's using a comparison. Everybody understand that? Romans 9, 17 again. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because was his name declared throughout all the earth during the time of Rome? No, it was not. Paul is using a similitude for the end time. Everybody with me so far? Keep reading. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. And whom he will, he hardeneth. So he's saying just like God hardened Pharaoh's heart, he's going to harden whose heart? Esau. Read on. Thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but... Because people always want to argue. Why God made, him, made Esau like that and made us Jacob? Simple as hell. Always want to argue. Go ahead. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Meaning when it comes to this Bible, shut up. God don't care what you think or your opinion. Go ahead. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? The thing formed is man. Can man open his damn black lip mouth and run his mouth? No. Go ahead. Hath not the pot of power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? So of the same lump of, of flesh, I'll use some other words, but he, now think about it historically. He said he chose to make one vessel unto what? And another vessel unto what? Remember what he said in verse 13. Who is he talking about? Esau and Jacob. Stay with me. I don't want to lose y'all. Keep it, let's keep it in cultural context. Thank you. Read that verse again. Verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? That's Jacob. And another unto dishonor. That's Esau. Read. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Do y'all know what that word fitted means? Made or created for or reserved for destruction. Oh, that's, that verse is heavy. What if God, willing to show his wrath it, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath created to be destroyed? Did not we read that somewhere else about that man of sin? The son of what? Perdition. Perdition, meaning destruction. Didn't we read that in 2 Peter 3 and 7? About what was the word? I forgot it again. Res ungodly man reserved what? For damnation. Fit it. Reserved. Everybody with me so far? It's saying the same thing. He ain't changing it. Now that was verse what? That was 22, right? Yes, sir. So now, who's fitted for destruction, brother? Esau. Who is the vessels of wrath, brother? Esau. Who's the son of perdition, brothers? Esau. Who is the eighth head, brother, that goes into perdition? Esau. Okay, I thought I had you there, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Watch this. Yeah. Right on that same verse. Verse 22. 
Read verse 22 again. What if God, willing to show his wrath, willing to show his wrath, I want to put emphasis on his because that's what he's saying. Everybody else get to show their wrath, but the most I said, listen, I'm going to show you what wrath is all about. Go ahead, read it again. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction so the most high is going to show you what wrath and destruction is all about he's going to he's going to redefine it that's what he's saying because everybody else got they esau got his ideas about wrath and destruction the most i say i'm going to give it a new meaning i'm going to show you exactly what wrath and destruction is all about read verse 23 verse 23 and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. And the Most High is going to also show you what mercy is all about, how he's going to redeem us. He's going to show he's going to show the world what mercy really is all about when he brings the 12 tribes of Israel into their kingdom. So you run around here thinking that you understand mercy. You ain't seen no mercy yet. The mercy that the Most High is going to establish when he raises this nation from the dunghill that it's in. At the same time, he's going to show how angry his wrath is. That's what he's saying here. Everybody else got their ideas about destruction and mercy. The most I say, I'm going to show you what it's really about. When I destroy the man that I built up and smash him in front of your face, then you're going to understand this, the, my destruction and power. And you're going to also understand my mercy. Who is he talking about? Esau and Jacob. It's a, it's, this is a beautiful chapter because it stays with those two boys. Go ahead, Dick. Go ahead Dick. Verse 22 again. Verse 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Fitted to destruction. Give me another, another word for destruction, brothers. Perdition, damnation, condemnation. Now, curse, right. Get me Revelation 6 and 12. We're going to read about the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. The book of Revelation. Chapter 6 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 6. Let me get it with you. I want to read along. Chapter 6 and verse 12. Go ahead. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Write this down, brothers. Sixth seal. Go ahead. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, for the ignorant, you might think it's talking about literal stars falling. If a literal star hits the earth, what, is, what will happen, brothers? Don't listen to Christians. They're stupid as hell. Watch the next verse. is going to make it plain what it's talking about. And the heaven departed as a scroll. What, will, what makes that effect? Uh, Abiel, can we see an effect? What is it, brothers? A nuclear bomb. Can we put that in so we can look at it? The mushroom cloud, they call it. Not that stupid gray one here, right there. I want that one, that one right. Read the verse again, Captain Isaac. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So everybody's gonna get touched. But you think you're gonna to run to your little island of Haiti and Jamaica, Puerto Rico, and you're gonna be safe? You ain't gonna be safe either. Every island's gonna be moved out the way. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's those underground bunkers. They got videos called uh, Doomsday Preppers, where they show you how the rich are making underground bunkers to escape the nuclear destruction that they know is coming. Go ahead. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. See that? From the wrath of the Lamb. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Paul was telling us about the vessels of wrath. So this sixth seal is the wrath that's coming upon Esau, coming upon America. Everybody with me so far? So I hope you wrote that down. 
the sixth seal. Now, let's go to Revelation 9, 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 9 and verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet. So write this down. The sixth trumpet. So far we got the sixth seal. Now we're reading about the sixth trumpet. Go ahead. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. The third part of men is the sons of the wicked. Go ahead, because we read from Genesis, there was no nationalities mentioned. You read about the sons of God, the sons of men, and the sons of the wicked, which came through Cain. Okay, read that again. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Uh -huh. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. So and what is he talking about here? What is John, the revelator, talking about here about the sixth seal and the angels being loosed from the great river Euphrates? What's going to happen around the great river Euphrates? Anybody know? World War III. We've gone over this many, many times. So he's talking about what? Destruction. The wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of God. Go ahead. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions because they roared go ahead and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone so john the revelator has given us a vision of war around the great river euphrates he see these missiles he's never seen one before he's describing it as best he can he said it's sad they sound like lions I never, I never seen this. Sounds like a lion. What did it say? And it said, out of his mouth goes what? Fire, and smoke, and brimstone. That's boom. Read. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. He's seeing these missiles being shot in great destruction. He's never seen nothing like that. So he's using a Western word, brothers, a similar to it as best he can. So the precept to that is Zechariah, because Zechariah saw the effect of the weapon that we just read about over here. When he says their eyes shall consume away in their holes, their, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. All that. That's what he's just read out of Revelation. Exactly. Read on. Verse 19. For their power is in their mouth. For their power is in their mouth. Talk about these missiles. Go ahead. And in their tails. And in their tails. Go ahead. For their tails were like unto serpents. When he saw the missiles, he's describing it. What the hell is that? It looks like a snake is doing this. He's describing the, the, the force used to push the missile. Everybody see me? Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. So John says the men that remained alive still didn't repent after he saw this great destruction. So now let's go to Revelation 16 and 12. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out of his vial. Write that down. Sixth vial. So far we got the sixth seal, the sixth trump, now the sixth vial. And so far, they've all described nothing but destruction. Go ahead. And the sixth angel poured out of his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So this includes China. This includes the Arabs. This includes everybody. What is this talking about? War, war, war. Everybody with me so far? So now, I'm just, I'm jumping the gun. I'm getting ahead now. 
get me Revelation 13, 18. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. What kind of man, brothers? Esau, the so called your friendly neighborhood white man. Go ahead. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Who can tell me now what the six 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 represents? Let's see who's paying attention. Huh. Oh, I see a few hands. Oh, I see more hands. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 let me hear you. The white T-shirt. You right here. Let me hear you. Six, six, six. What does it represent? The six seal, the six trumpet, and the six veil. There you go. All praise to the most high. Let's get it all in hand. So if you wanted precepts, those are your precepts for your six, six, six. You don't got to, oh, I'm, I, I'm confused. Your confusion should be over. Listen to these Christians talk about their foolishness. So basically what we just read is that Esau's number, Esau's name is destruction. There you go. That's what that's telling you. The, all three sixes represent destruction. Exactly. That's why it said that he was the vessel fitted for destruction because he was go. made to wear that number. Exactly. All praises to the most high. So now, let's, but yes. Yeah, you remember the, the, yeah, the scriptures in uh, Psalm 137. And verse 8, mm -hmm. Moses, uh, David prophesied, O daughters of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, oh, that's happy a good shall one. be. That's good. All praises. Say it again, Lob. Yeah, man, uh, read it, Isaac. Uh, yes, sir, it. Psalm 137, verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 8. Verse 7, start at 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. That conclude everything we went forward because David prophesied what the destroyer was going to be was the children of Edom, which we proved that the 6-6 six -six represent that nations they're called today America, the white men today. Moses, uh, David prophesied of that thing. You understand that uh, Esau was to be destroyed. That's right. That's what it said. Exactly. Now, let's go back to Revelation 13, and let's start at verse 16. Let's, put our, our, let's just put it all together. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Yeah, hold on a second. That's the reason why it said in Obadiah that when his, when his job is finished, the Mosai is going to destroy them all. That's the proof that their whole purpose was for God to channel his anger through. Like we've been saying, now you're getting the proof. Exactly. Revelation 13 and 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Let's pause right there. He causeth all, both small and great, small nations, great nations, rich nations, poor nations, free nations, bond nations, to receive a mark in, in what does it say, in what? In their right hand or in their foreheads. We read at the beginning of the lesson, when God said put a mark in the foreheads of the people, it was talking about what, brothers? So now, this is the opposite now. Think about it. This is what we're reading now about the man of, man of what? See, when you get, hold on, I'm sorry, just hit me. Get, in case you all think it's a microchip, get 2 Thessalonians again, because you missed it. It's chapter 2, verse 3. It tells you what it is. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 3. Ain't nobody listening, but here you go. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin. Man of what? That man of sin. No, man of microchip. That man of sin. That man of sin. Of sin. Of sin. Of sin. Of sin. Go ahead. Be revealed the son of perdition. Let's go back to Revelation now, 13. See, I took us through all these steps because if I just went straight to it, it might have been hard for some of you to see. 
Try to go through his various precepts. Revelation 13, 16, one more again. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So what is this mark, brothers? Sin. That's this mark, sin. I need more precepts. Let's get you some more then. Get me 2 Timothy 4 and 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Abiel, can you put up an iron? I want you to look. It's telling you what it is. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The Bible says having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We all use hot irons, right? When that happens to our shirts, what, is, what can we do with that shirt? We got to throw it away. So God is saying that in the last days, some shall depart from Christ and have their conscience. Your conscience is where? In your mind. It ain't saying put that literal mark in your mind. What is it talking about, brothers? Sin. Being, having your conscience seared with hot irons in sin. Read verse 1 and 2 again, Isaac. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So he's telling you right there in verse 1, seducing spirits and doctrines, doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, false un also includes under that, you can put politics, you can put Christianity, you can put anything that's against God's laws. It's very broad. Everybody with me? But the reason we stress politics and Christianity, because those are the two main things Babylon uses. Babylon the great America. Christianity and democracy. Politics. Everybody with me so far? Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. You know why they speak lies in hypocrisy? Because they have the Bible in their hands and say we are a Christian nation. Do they do anything this Bible says? That's hypocrisy. They have these Bibles in their courts. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so I help you God? I swear. Then they throw the Bible away and give you false judgments, wrong judgments. Read it again. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So when you read down, he gives you an example. He uses the Roman Catholic Church. Read it so we can see he's talking about Christianity. Forbidding to marry. Does not the Catholic Church forbid their priests to marry? Go ahead. And commanding to abstain from meat. So during Lent or Fridays, they, have, they say do not eat meat. They say only eat fish. That's what they do. Go ahead. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving right. of them which believe and know the truth. Of them which believe and know the truth. Let's go back now. Go back to um, Revelation 13, 16. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So the mark in your forehead and your right hand is what, brothers? Let's get another precept. Give me 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Let's see if it's a microchip. Let, maybe it is. I'm just so confused. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What's that word, Isaac? Strong delusion. Delusion. Del a delusion infects you where, brothers? In your mind. In your mind. God shall send them strong delusion. Go ahead. That they should believe a lie. That they, if you reject this truth, he said he's going to send you a strong delusion and cause you to believe a lie. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. That they all might what? Be damned. Now this is talking about our people. That all of us might be damned. Why, Isaac? Who believed not the truth. Who believed not the truth. Give me that truth in Psalms 119, please. I don't believe them laws things, brothers. I don't know. I don't believe that. Give me that. Psalms 119, verse 142. Psalms 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 
and 11 again. So you don't believe that this gospel has anything to do with God's laws? All right, this is what the Lord says for you. You want to follow Christianity, right? You and your mothers and your grandmothers. Read. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Give me one word that starts with an S for unrighteousness. Sin. Sin. That's what the whole Bible talk about. Read, read verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, God, don't do that. Give me Job 12, 16. God said he'll send you a strong delusion that you believe a lie. Job reminded you of that thing. That ain't in the Old Testament. Yes, it is. Job chapter 12 and verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. The deceived and the deceiver are God's. So if you reject his laws, the Most High said, all right, I'm going to deceive you now. I'm going to give you a strong delusion that you believe a lot. That's why many of our people will die for the white image of Jesus. They will die for that foolishness. Okay? They will go cross countries and get beheaded for that foolishness. Now go back to uh, Revelation 13. We in what verse 17? Verse 17. Revelation 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell. Say Give me another word for buy or sell. Another word. Trade. That's what it's talking about. Trade. Because brothers will read that and go, I can't buy a Snickers bar. It ain't talking about you buying a Snickers bar. It's talking about trade. And Negroes ain't trading nothing. Read that again. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Now, under this mark, we found out already that this mark is sin. Correct, brothers? Under sin falls politics. It falls and religion. So, because you might have the argument that says, well, some countries are not Christian countries, but they deal on a political level with, with America, do they not? Even the communist Cuba, which is our people over there, but Castro still had a political, um, give me a word, connection with America. That's why we got Guantanamo Bay. How America got Guantanamo Bay, isn't that? We're not supposed to deal with Cuba. What's going on here? Even communist China, look at half your products. It says what? Made in China. Because China ain't uh, Christian, and they don't accept democracy. But there's still some kind of political uh, workings between Babylon and them, some trade going on. Everybody understand that? Read it again. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. You have to have the mark, meaning you have to have that sin, some allegiance with Babylon to great. The great, go ahead. Or the name of the beast. Or you got to accept the name of What is the name of the beast? Get me Revelation 17 and 5. Write this down. The mark is sin. Now let's find out what the name of the beast is. Now remember, this is a similitude. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. Who is Babylon the Great, brothers? America, the United States of America. But you will not find the word America in the Bible. So God has the prophets write a what, brothers? A similitude. Read verse 5 again. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You know why it's a mystery, brothers? Because this place feeds us. This place educates us. This place gives us homes and houses. So our people go, no, they, they is good to us. That can't be them. This is America. I'm going to show you that. Jump down, jump down to verse 18 to show you that this is America. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is, the, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. If you doubt us, America, you name another country that rules over the kings of the earth. Who is ruling this earth? America. Even in the UN got mad and Putin said, America does not listen to NATO, don't listen to the uh, NATO or the United Nations. He said, no, America don't listen to nobody. If you watch the news, you see it for yourself. America does what she wants to do. 
Now, I said that this place feeds us and takes care of us. Here's another similar to real quick. Revelation 12. Uh, I think it's 16, 17 about. Y'all know what I want. I'm shooting from the hip. 16. No, wait, wait, wait. 14, 14. Verse 4. Revelation 12 and 14. There's a key word. When I said our people don't believe that America's is Babylon the Great, this is why. Watch this. Verse 14. And to the woman were giving two wings of a great eagle. Let me help you out here. The woman here is Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. When you read verse 1, it says there was a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head was a crown having 12 stars. Letting you know that this woman represents who, brothers? Israel. Read again. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. For a great escape. Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. The wilderness at this time was Africa. Into her place. From Africa we went to America. Where she is nourished. Here, this is the part I want. Where she is nourished. For a time. For a time. And times. And times. And half a time. 350 years. Let's see who's nourishing us. From the face of the serpent. You hear what it's saying? The serpent is nourishing us. The serpent. Another name for serpent, brothers, is the devil is nourishing us. He gives us food. He gives us clothes, education. He gives us religion. Whatever we need, the serpent gives it to us. Who knows a pre... Let me see who's thinking in here. Who has a precept in Deuteronomy that says the same daggone thing? Ezra. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Can you read that for us, Isaac? says the same thing. That's why I said... Now, I said... That's why God said he has a prophet's right in similitudes. Because what we're about to read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 40... Is what we just read in Revelation 12, 14. Come on. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. It's going to make it plain. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm. which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. If you want anything, God says your enemies must give it to you. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And the same enemy will put an iron yoke on your neck. So now who is that brother who's the enemy? The so-called white man. So when you get to Revelation, it's calling them the serpent. The dragon with seven heads. That's what it's calling them. It's talking about the same man. Go back now to Revelation. What'd you say, y'all, what's up? It, it gave the term uh, serpent. What is the characteristics of a serpent? Subtle, sneaky, right? That's why when we read in Timothy's where it said, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits meaning subtle, they're very subtle with, with what they do. And you get bit. That's what happened in the beginning with Eve. Right. Go back to Revelation 13. Revelation. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Revelation 13, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So it's saying nobody can trade unless you have the mark. And his name is what, brothers? Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great represents what, brothers? America. It says you cannot trade unless you accept either the mark, his name, or the number of his name. You got to be in cahoots with who, brothers? America, Esau. You have to have some kind of allegiance with him on some level to do trade. And if you go against this man, what does he do to you? He puts an embargo. He cuts you off. He just did it with, uh, did he do it with Russia? He did it with Russia. He did it with Korea. Iran. You're looking at it. And then you go, um, I'm not sure if that's it. What about the microchip? What about that damn microchip, you fool? <laughs> Good. This, this, that scripture started off with the word mystery. Because a lot of people still are confused about where Babylon the Great right. is. They're confused about who the devil is and all of that. Mm -hmm. That's why when Paul said it in, in Thessalonians, he said the mystery of iniquity. Because people are trying to guess. Like mm -hmm. today, they, why? Because they've been subtly deceived with the right. seducing spirits of devils. Mm -hmm. 
And they have not figured out that this white man is the devil. He's the 666. Right. He's the man of destruction. He, he is the mystery. Exactly. But that, we figured out the mystery according to the Most all High. All praises to the Most High. And that's what I was saying. Because this man nourishes us, he gives us everything, it's a mystery to a lot of our people. They go, no. Like that black woman. She said, no. No, Jesus can't be. No. Jesus can't be black because black Jesus ain't giving you no food, huh? It's the white man giving you food, clothing, and housing, and welfare, and public assistance. Jobs, and education, and religion. It's the white man that's doing this stuff. Where we at, Captain Isaac? Verse 17. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah look at that. This was a Klan rally. They was going to jump on the Klan, man. Look what the black woman did. Now that's Jesus! Don't beat Jesus! That was her that was at the beginning of that comment. She's the one that made that comment. That was her. <laughs> Where we at, Captain Isaac? Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell. That no man can do trade. That no man can do trade. That's what it's talking about. Save he that had the mark. Had the mark. The mark is what, brothers? Sin. Whether political, religious. Go ahead. Or the name of the beast. What's the name of the beast, brothers? Babylon the Great. In, in, in modern term, Babylon the, Babylon the Great translates to what? America. Go ahead. Or the number of his name. The number of his name is what, brothers? Which represents what, brothers? Where can we find out about those destructions in the six what? Six seal, six trump, six vial. Very good. All praise. Go ahead, Isaac. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. So God right here is telling you, listen, that beast I'm talking about is really a man. Did you see it right there, brothers? It says, here's wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of what, brothers? Man. This beast represents man on earth. What type of man, brothers? The so-called white man. Go ahead. And his number is 600, three score and six. So giving all praises to the most high. There should be no confusion from you brothers about what is 666, what is the mark, what is the, the name. And it's all interchangeable. Let me show how interchangeable it is. Um, uh, Revelation 14, 11. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Notice it says the mark of his name. It is now in, Re in chapter 13 it says the number of the beast. Here it's saying the mark of his name. The name was Babylon. It's interchangeable. Here's another one. Revelation 15 and 2. Revelation 15 and verse 2. And I, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name notice now it says the number of his name it's interchangeable it's still talking about esau still talking about america everybody understand that so that's what was this part this sounds a little different than over here it's all saying the same thing all saying the same Thing. Just in case it's still there, I feel that, that, that thought is still there, it's still a chip to them, to some of them, the one I sent you. The one to some of them or some of them on yeah, the internet? Some, some on the internet and in here. <laughs> just, just feel it. Um, the, the Greek I put in. Cause someone, are you trying to say the white man has not made a microchip? No, he made the chip. Exactly. But that's not the mark of the beast. Exactly. Thank you. Next window, the other window I want you to get also. Blow it up. Everyone can see it. Haragma, it pronounces it. So you know how it's pronounced. Strong's G, 5480. Haragma. Haragma. That's the chip. So he says Strong's. See, we said Strong's G. That's the source of blue letter. You know, that's, that's not a valid source to use. Blow it up, the Haragma. That'd be a, okay. See, it says a stamp, an imprinted mark, right? They use that. Go, see, it's a stamp in your skin. It's a chip, right? A stamp, an imprinted mark. Now go to the other one. Now, the other one is Revelation 7 and 3 about being sealed. The Lord putting a seal in your head. Y'all familiar with that? That's fragizo. Now jump down the definitions there. It says to set a seal upon. Mark with a seal. To seal. For security from Satan. Jump down in order 
to mark a person or a thing. Mm, another mark. Read number one. To set a mark upon by the impress of a seal or a stamp. So that must be a holy microchip. That must be a righteous one. Because it's the same definition as the other one. It's the same definition. A holy microchip, a wicked one, which one is it? It's the commandments. Period. That's all it is. The same definition. You see different word. A seal or a mark by a stamp. It's the exact same definition. An impress means an imprint. It's the same thing. So don't let these Negroes fool you with this nonsense Greek stuff. It's confusion and madness. Exactly. So, again, again, I just want to definitely... Uh, we discussed, before we get to that, we don't advocate vaccines. We were talking about this in Virginia because it came vaccines that came up. Um, I was, Captain Yashu was speaking on it, and he was saying that um, the problem is they put a whole lot, right? Make sure I'm quoting you right. Go ahead. You want to speak on it? But they put a lot of preservatives and other chemicals. That's, that it's, it's not so much the disease itself. It's what they do to preserve the disease in there. So there's like formaldehyde, there's uh, aluminum, there's heavy metals and stuff like that. Right. So they give too many at, at, a, at a young age. Right. They should only give uh, one to two at a visit. But the, the bigger issue is that when we grew up, we didn't get 36 vaccinations before we were five. Right. And now the vaccination schedule is you're putting all this strain on, 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 a, on a young body's immune system before the age of five. Right. So, so you know, there's, I mean, there's different strategies to that, but it should be more spaced out. It shouldn't be so frequent. That's if they even want to. That's if they even want to do it. Right. If they even want to do it. We don't advocate it, but if you choose to, listen good, don't get them all at that one time. So likewise, we don't advocate no, no, nothing in your body. Some things is necessary in your body. Somebody might have, need a pacemaker. What else? Well, let, let the nigga die. No, give him the pacemaker. <laughs> Some brothers get simple. If you need it, hey, get it. Um, <laughs> they might put a chip on the pacemaker. Damn. So, Dag, it'll be in their yeah. chest. So now, what's the judgment for that? <laughs> hey, hey. I'm Elgin Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.